Well, in the meantime, controversy is trailing the latest report from the National Bureau of Statistics, which indicates a significant rise in Nigeria's inflation rate. According to the data, inflation increased from the 19th consecutive month, increasing from 33.95% in May to 34.19% in June. While there's been some skepticism about the accuracy of the NBS figures, economic experts are analyzing the factors contributing to this uptick, uh, with many pointing to President Bola Tinubu's measures, which primarily cut energy and gas subsidies and devalued the Naira twice in a single year. Well, for more on the inflation numbers released by the NBS and the impact of uh, this inflationary trend, let's uh, bring in Shegun Ajayi Kadir, who is the Director General Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Uh, let's first of all go back to these uh, numbers and see how this first is affecting your members and uh, pretty much more the average Nigerian. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Uh, inflation generally is of uh, deep concern to every economic player, uh, be it the manufacturer uh, and, of course, the consumers. Uh, for us in the manufacturing sector, uh, it's been a very concerning matter. And what it does immediately to your process is that it increases the cost of your input, at the same time, uh, it reduces your capacity to fully utilize uh, the setup that you have. It reduces your capacity utilization. Again, it reduces the capacity of the consumer to purchase. So it means you are going to have a very high inventory of uh, unsold stock. At the same time, it's going to affect your turnover because you are not able to stock as much uh, raw materials as you are going to, uh, as you will have loved, so that you can do your planning and scale over a reasonable period. Uh, ultimately, uh, like I said, you know, manufacturers operate on a very lean margin, uh, so you have to be able to continuously produce so that with scale, you'll be able to make profit. So generally speaking, uh, inflation, is deals a very uh, difficult, hard blow on the manufacturing sector. But for the consumer, it's also the same. The average manufacturer is also a consumer in some ways. So we have uh, an environment where you are not able to plan your financials. And don't forget that uh, the average Nigerian, the ordinary Nigerian, maybe earns a wage or lives on daily basis. So you end your your income, and then you make purchases. So it's a very difficult uh, situation for everyone. Let me jump in on this, and we go back to the numbers. You know, sometimes you get to see numbers like this, and they scare you. But again, we also understand that for man, that's the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, they have their own experts uh, who are also uh, gauging the numbers. Uh, from what you've seen uh, from NBS, does it tally with what you have uh, already? Okay, so I think this is a report that was uh, misconstrued, actually. And because I, I was told that there was a report uh, in the papers that indicated that manufacturers rejected uh, the figures from NBS. So to put it in pro pro uh, proper context, uh, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria may not necessarily have anything against the figures released by NBS because we understand where the NBS is coming from, and we know that they are the authorized uh, body to give us the figures. However, it doesn't stop anyone from interrogating the basis for coming to that assumption. But we must understand that this has to be scientific, and it depends on the model that you are using. They have chosen a base period of, I think, 2009, and they have put everything in the basket to be able to determine the headline inflation. So we may quarrel about the weighted average that they have used. I mean, if you tell an average Nigerian now that food inflation is 40.87% or so, 
he will quarrel with you. I mean, because he has seen the prices of food go up. But you see, when you determine headline inflation, you put them in a basket, and it depends on the uh, weight you are giving to that average, I mean, to the component of the, uh, uh, of the determination you are having. So in the real sense of the word, we have seen uh, some uh, prices yeah. go up much higher than the other. So we don't necessarily dispute uh, what the uh, NBS is saying, but it would be good to interrogate it to see that the weight you give to each component that you have in the basket reflects, I mean, what you give government and the average uh, economic watcher an objective basis for assessing how high the inflation has gone. Well, well, let me let me jump in here because a while ago you you used uh, you qualified it as an assumption, and now you're saying that it would be better for us uh, to have a, a you know a certain form just form of certainty to the numbers uh, within the uh, man. Uh, does this imply? Is this indicative that uh, you still think that sometimes this borders on assumptions? Yes, it depends on the model you are using. I mean, you could decide to give uh, food inflation, for instance, a much higher uh, weight than you would have food, uh, I mean, than you will have electricity and transport, for instance, because these are three major components that drive, that I think drives uh, inflation in Nigeria. I mean, the cost of food, the cost of uh, electricity, and logistics, transportation, and, and all the rest. So it depends on how you do the balancing. And I, I, I do believe that uh, what is important about the inflation figure you release is to enable government to plan as to how to bring down inflation and to reflate productivity. So it depends on the utility you want to give to the figure itself. I, I do not like to just look at the figure alone and, and, and uh, isolate it from government uh, planning and uh, economic planning generally. So I, I, I'm of the opinion that uh, there is need for us to re-examine the basis for it. Why not necessarily uh, discrediting the figure that has been given by NBS? You know, while we'll wait to have that re-examination as highlighted by you, uh, if you will, uh, what has been the impact of the inflationary trend uh, amongst uh, you know, other manufacturers and key players in uh, Nigeria's economy? Okay, yes, because this is very important. And I think that it will call to question how we approach our special uh, condition as uh, economic players, as a country, as an economy in the global space. Uh, it is expected that the CBN will continue to work on the delicate relationship between inflation, exchange rate, and uh, interest rate. And so there's a tendency for you to continue to insist that inflation rates has to be high for you to be able to come. I mean, that interest rate has to be high for you to be able to control inflation. But we must check the impact on productivity. And I, and I can see that's where your question is coming from. From the manufacturer's perspective, Inflation completely debilitates your business project, I mean, your production projections. Because one, uh, the manufacturer will rely on inputs. In most cases, uh, you have the raw materials, spears, and machineries imported into the country. It has escalated because of the uh, exchange rate. It has been compounded by the inflation rate. So you are going to, be able, you are going to have a very high cost of input. At the same time, it is going to uh, make the final product that you are going to bring out of your factory to be more expensive than those alternatives that are coming from low-cost environment which competes with you in the market. Yeah. The average uh, Nigerian will have to decide on what purchases to make. So if the domestically produced uh, uh, items are higher in terms of price. It will be left on the shelf without being purchased. And this will increase our unplanned inventory. It will in reduce the uh, profitability that we have. It will have an impact on taxes that we pay. 
and it may lead to uh, job losses. I mean, if you continue consistently not to be able to recover right. your costs and to sell, you are going to have to take a rational decision as to what steps to take. Let me quickly bring this and see if we can close on this. On the back of what you've just highlighted, how has it been for members and other key players uh, to be able to stay afloat irrespective of what Nigeria is dealing with? Well, it's been a very difficult situation and that's why we have been engaging government to see how we can reduce the binding constraints uh, that has limited the performance of the sector. As you are aware, the sector has witnessed uh, some exit of uh, major players in some sectors of the economy. We have also seen manufacturing contribution to GDP to be dwindling. Uh, we've also experienced a situation where we continue to face high costs of electricity. Insecurity has impacted our capacity to source our raw materials locally and even to distribute uh, in terms of logistics. We've also seen that the increase in, the, in general prices, the removal of SWEP subsidy, the floating of the exchange rate, all those have tended to impact both the consumers and the production process. So the manufacturing sector is actually taking a beating. But the good story is that we are engaging government. As you are aware, we just had a summit with government where we decided to rethink manufacturing. And it has thrown up quite a number of issues that we now have a consensus between government and, and manufacturers that we need to address in order for us to pull the sector out of the decline. Because if this continues, and I'm sure you are aware that the manufacturing sector is a bigger uh, employer in, in, the, in the national economy. So it could start to affect jobs and may impact government's uh, desire to raise uh, more than a million jobs in, in, the sh in the short run. So I believe that uh, it's impacted us negatively, but the engagement with government that we are having should normally uh, result in, in, in some positive trends, uh, probably in the uh, second half of the year. Shagun Ajay Kader, DG, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Many thanks for speaking with us on Newsnight.